Okay, so we're continuing in the details of Nikias, right? So we're now free from any sort of uh, gazelle related issues and misappropriations, right? So last time we were talking about Aina, or Aina, Aina. So just to add two things. One thing is the the Rabshamshan and Paul Harsh says, right, I know um, includes two two mitzvahs in one, right? One mitzvah is loisoyne ishasochiv means that you can't insult another person, right? The classic is like we mentioned that you know ger and you remind him of all the things that he did before about tshuva, right? So that's one. And the other thing is this overcharging or undercharging buyer seller, right? Mm -hmm. So what's the common denominator? The common denominator of these things, the word o oin, right? Reishas oini, right? Ruven b'choyri ata, Ruven, you are my firstborn. Reishas oini, you are the beginning of my vigor, or my strength, right? So in other words, the, the nature of the relationship between those two people is one kind of uses his power to overpower another, right? So when you when somebody insults somebody, is you know, they're putting him down, right? He wants to make sure that to to right? To to lower lower him down. And same thing when somebody's overcharging or undercharging, right? He's using his his um, elevated position to to again to either overcharge or undercharge. Now that is not to say that that if a person is fully aware of that he's being overcharged, right? Like we were saying last time, mm -hmm. you know like in a, in a ballpark or in a convenience <laughs> store, there's not to say that that's I know. Because in cases of I know, let's say halakhically speaking, if the case of I know is, let's say if you charge more than sixth, right? Whatever the sixth mm -hmm. is, right? Really it's mekach tois and you can go back, right? You come home and you find out that you were overcharged. You can go home and you can go to this, back to the store and say, hey, you overcharged me, please give me back. I don't want your sale, right? I can say, well, let me just give you back the difference. Forget about it. No, you don't have to. I mean, you could, but you don't have to. Really, the sale is re reversible. The sale is reversible, right? It's a question whether that's a derabonin, whether that's a derais, or where do we know this? You know, it doesn't say in the Pasuk. If it overcharges you by six, you know, nowhere does it say this in the Pasuk, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but the, right, so the point is that clearly, the mitzvah of Aino is going to be, is going to include some sort of lack of knowledge. Right? Mm -hmm. Meaning not like, oh, I'm using his power, he's aware, but I'm nice enough to, to give in. You know, that maybe is some form of Aino, but that's not the classic form of Aino. Mm -hmm. The classic form of Aino is going to be where a person is just not aware that he's getting ripped off. So much so that they ask a question, meaning, What's the difference, right? You go to the store and I say, give me a dozen eggs, right? And I, how much is a dozen eggs? A dollar. I give him a dollar, I come home, there's only 11 eggs, right? So clearly that's a problem, right? That's no question that you're not going to say, well, but you were willing to do it. No, you got, you got cheated, right? So what's the difference if I asked for a dozen e eggs and I got 11 versus I asked for a dozen, I got a dozen, but I got charged for 13, right? At the end of the day, it's, so, it's the same idea, right? Mm -hmm. It's the same idea, but it's not the same. The point is, it's not the same idea. So if, okay, it's not, it's not the same. Why it's not the same idea? Because, um, because not knowing the price is more, for, the prices, let's put it, are more fluid, right? So therefore, a person may not know the price, and he has to go back and find out. If it's something that's clear cut, eventually yes, it is. It could be the same idea. Something is very clear cut, right? Um, it would be the same idea. But if, but in a certain situation, so, so again, nowadays it's very difficult. Nowadays, I think the the laws of Aino definitely have been blurred, and uh, so I, I I heard that that they're not. You know, it's very difficult to apply them precisely nowadays because just the prices are so all over the place, you know, the prices in Manhattan are not the same as the prices in Brooklyn, and the prices in Brooklyn are the same as in, in JFK Airport, and then JFK Airport is the same as the, the, the right Madison Square Garden. So, mm -hmm. so it's very difficult to know exactly what is exactly that market price out of which you are supposed to base everything. 
so okay so anyway so that's that um right but the point is right but, but, but the point is the point is a it's clear that some aspect of a is improperly right misappropriating somebody else's funds mm -hmm. right and using a relationship where you are kind of um either by treachery or by strength you kind of overpowering that person that's the oh you know the 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 same as insult the same as okay that's 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 that okay so now now moving on so now we are we are now in this version on page on page 188 Okay, let us now speak with regards to arayot. What are arayot? Arayot are illicit relationships, right? So, so he says. So again, we mentioned already before that, right? That, that arayot really refers to you know to what's called incest, right? Mm -hmm. Some sort of incest or or uh, or what do you call it or adultery mm -hmm. right those are areas mm -hmm. but but it's also an umbrella term for any kind of physical physical in, in, indulgement indulgence promiscuity in, promis, per, per, right, promiscu, promiscuousness something like that promiscuity. right promiscuity. promiscuity okay that's the word he translates okay here. so all right okay take his word for it <laughs> um so fine so um so that's that. But we said meaning, meaning, but but it's it's since it's under the same umbrella, it's also not far fetched to say that one will lead to the other, right? Mm -hmm. Good. That's one. But let's see what it says. So now let's speak about arayas. They are also chamudim, right? It's like an Eretz Yisrael they say, ah, is a chamud. What, what, right? How cute, right? Mm -hmm. But but that's not what it means here. It means they're also from the things that people desire, right? They're also from the things that people desire. And they're secondary in level to theft. Like the statement of our sages that I mentioned above, Rubon be Gezel, majority of people in Gezel, Umiutam be Arais, and minority in Arais. Okay, now the bottom notes over here has, 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 is, is, is having a, has, is a draw, draw, you know, has dro dropped its jaw, so to speak. What? What did he just say? What did he just say? He said that the desire for Arais is secondary to Gezel. Right now, if you go around and do a um, what's the word, a, 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 a survey, I'm not sure if that's if you're gonna get that same same result. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, right. So he says, "Vehir Ramchal does not mean that the riots are on a lower level than theft in terms of lust, because the Gemara in Chagiga states clearly that desire for illicit relations is stronger." This I didn't see there. I looked in that Gemara and I did not see what it said. I did not see this. This. I'll mm -hmm. explain what I mean in a second. Rather, he means that a person is less susceptible to comm committing an arias related offense than he is to committing a theft-related offense. For even though the desire for arias is so great, the lines separating the permitted and forbidden are more clear-cut, leaving less room for rationalization. The laws of theft, on the other hand, are often subtle and complex, creating gray areas that provide fertile ground for justifying forbidden behavior. Okay? So they're saying like this. So again, what, what, what bothers me? Okay, but what are they saying? They're saying, of course, it's not, they're not secondary to, to, to Gezel, right? A person has much stronger desire for Arias, for, for illicit relations, or for promiscuity, than he does for you know getting a hundred extra dollars or or perhaps a million extra dollars, but but the, the there are more gray areas you know, and when it comes to Arias you know it's clear you know you know I didn't uh, have relations with that woman yeah. yes you did you know 
it's not like you know so it's the problem the problem is more clear so the problem the problems are are are, are more clear right um the problems are more clear while in Gezel, the problems are less clear. Okay, so that's how they that's how they say. It. I hear. I mean, I don't. I don't think there's. There's. I think that's a legitimate point. The question is, is that the intent of meaning, Ramchal? Meaning, what's more uh, forbidden is more desirable. That, mm -hmm. No. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure. Why, why, why no, are you sorry, saying no, what no, you're I'm saying? Mis I, I, I'm, I'm misunderstood. I, I mean, the, 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 the question that I have is, why does he need to speak? Who right. cares? There's, right, what, what does the Ramchal need this line? Right, the whole line is, mm -hmm. Now we shall discuss Arise. Mm -hmm. Because they too belong to the right to Hachamudim. Mm -hmm. They also belong to the section of the desire, desire, desirables. Oh, yeah. Desirables. Right? But they're secondary to the level of Gezel because we see that from that statement of Chazal that majority of people fall into Gezel and minority of people fall into Arise. Mm -hmm. Right? But w w why is that necessary? What, what is he speaking this out for? Just say, okay, I'm going to speak about Arias and move on. Do I need to know? I mean, I, I, first of all, do I need Ramchal to tell me that the Arias also belongs to the category of Hamudim? I mean, I know, I, you know, I mean, I, I, what else, what else? Is there another category that you can, uh, of, you know, right? Another category that you're going you're gonna to categorize it with, characterize it with? I don't think so. So what does what he wants to say? And why does he need to say that they're on the second, in, in, in second level? You know, and then this, on the bottom, I have to have a whole... He doesn't really mean it's second level. It's not really second level. It's really first level. But it's second level because people are less likely to fall into it because it's more black and white. Right? So it's really second level only in terms of your likelihood of, 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 of getting caught in the trap of a rise. But really, but Gezel is first level. In, in, right? Mm -hmm. Right? That's, so is that, is that what he means? Is that, is that what he means? No. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. And also, their their proof is to me is questionable because the Gemara over there says like this. The Gemara is talking about well, their proof is from the following. Their proof is that the Gemara says that you, you cannot darshan, you, right? A, a Rebbe cannot teach the parsha of Arias, mm -hmm. right, or the reasons for Arias to more than two students at a time. That's the Mishnah and Chagiga says, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So the Gemara says, why not? Why can't you have more than two students? Let's have three students. The Gemara's final answer is that usually a class involves such that one student will ask a question, while the Rebbe talks to that student to answer his question, the other students, you know, are passively listening. Passively listening. So if there is only one other student left, mm -hmm. so okay, so what is he going to do? He's going to listen to what the Rebbe is answering to the second student. But if there are two students remaining, so those two students will, will start talking amongst themselves, miss important piece of information from the Rebbe, and as a result, they will be matir, again, this is important, I think, for us, they will, they will be matir some kind of a rise. Right? They will allow some kind of a rise. Right? So... <clears throat> So the Gemara says, okay, why don't you apply that for all the things? And the, you know, so that sh this this lesson should be then this halacha of no, no more than two, 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 two students at a se at a session should apply to every avera because maybe they're going to monitor it. So they say no over there. There's a greater desire for arayas, right? And again, we see this idea in Chal that the more the desire, the more likely you are to make a mistake to ra rationalize or ra rationalize improperly, right? So that's a, just a beautiful, beautiful connection there. Mm -hmm. But then the Gemara says, what about Gezel also? Ah, Gezel also. People fall into Gezel just as much, and they desire such as much. The Gemara, so the Gemara answers, Arias people desire, um, Gezel people desire only when they see the, you know, when it's in front, when, when it's in front of the person. 
right? When I'm sitting in a shear, I'm not thinking about my plans to rob somebody. Mm -hmm. I'm focusing on the shear. But if I'm sitting in a shear, it's very, I could be distracted, especially if the shear is on an interesting topic of Arias. Mm -hmm. It's not so far-fetched that I'm going to get distracted by the, by the, you know, by the subject <coughs> matter. So even though it's not in front of me, there are no women here, but my mind wanders, right? So, okay, so that's the Gemara's answer. So from here, they deducing. So you see that the desire for Arias is greater than the desire for Gezel. Because even in the sheer Gezel, you're going to get... But, right, by, by sheer Gezel, you're not going to get distracted right. because Gezel only, you know, when you see somebody's Lamborghini, right. you have a desire to, to carjack it. But if you're talking about a, a hypothetical case of a stolen Lamborghini in the sheer, you're not starting to start, you know, thinking about your plans to steal it. Much like in Arias, talking about Arias, it's easy for you to get, to get... I think that's, again, maybe I'm re misreading the Gemara now. I think about maybe I'm misreading the Gemara. But the, but the bottom line is, I'm not sure. Just because Gezel, just because Gezel is, a, is only triggered by the, you know, by the presence of the thing itself, right? And but while Arias is, is triggered by my inner chemicals, so to speak, does that mean that? Gezel is less of a desire than Arias, and Arias is more of a desire than Gezel. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, in general, the whole idea of quantifying levels of desire is a hard idea because, on one hand, like we were mentioning the other day, Gezel, like, meaning, meaning, well, meaning, uh, there's the insecurity of not having money. I think a much is a much stronger drive that even in the insecurity of not having a rise or not you can, even though we see that we're saying somebody who doesn't have you know access to a woman will will eventually perhaps fall into the Sahara because the, the that's a, it is a basic need but at the same time I think the insecurity of of not having parnasa can bring a person to really terrible, right. terrible affairs, right? So, on the other hand, when a person is secure with money, to steal, you know, his hundredth mi million, maybe, maybe it's not such a great it's a hard. While to fall into his hundredth woman, I, I, again, I don't know. It's very difficult to. It's a lot of moving. It's right. Very difficult to quantify levels, levels of desire. Yeah. You know, I remember this famous Midrash when they asked to remove Yitzhak or for one. Right. So they, they specifically asked for this one. They didn't ask to remove the desire to steal. Apparently, it's such a big deal. Right now. But wasn't other some, some, the same Midrash saying that Hashem, after he returned it, he put some kind of restriction on Yitzhak or so it's not so effective? It comes across relatives or something like that. I'm not sure. I have to look at that because if it is, then it shows that Hashem has to intervene himself to restrict his role in that particular area. He didn't have to intervene in them stealing. But I have to look up at the Midrash. Right, it's, it's a Gemara. It's a Gemara. Yeah. I mean, maybe, I don't remember in, in the Gemara the part about Arias. Um, what is the Gemara? The Gemara is in sight. I mean, it, no. Ah, okay. okay. Um, Anyways, so if I would read simply this line, I would say similar, but I mean, I, I don't know if I would necessarily read the way they're saying. I mean, again, I like the idea that there are more gray areas 
in Gezel than there are in Arias. Although again, the, I mean, we'll see, the, the, uh, the parts of Arias that he's going to talk about are going to be more, be, some of them at least maybe could be more gray, for some, at least for some people. But, but he's definitely going off this, this statement of Chazal that majority of people fall into Gezel mm -hmm. and minority go into Arias, right? Okay. I think it's because, simply, I don't know if necessarily because, because Arias is, is greater desire or less desire, more desire. Um, I'm not sure, I just, it's a Shneem B'madrega. I just think that it's more commonplace. More commonplace, people, like I said, said people, people need to constantly be making money. And so they're constantly involved in all sorts of business-related, economics-related transactions. So therefore, there's more opportunities for trouble, for, for falling mm -hmm. into it. Right? Arias, you have to go out and actually go and, you know, find some woman, find some, some partner, etc. So that's what, I, you know, just maybe, maybe it's just, just practically speaking, it's, mm -hmm. this is more prevalent because it's more commonplace. I don't know. Okay, moving on. So let's go. So if anybody who wants to cleanse himself uh, completely from this chet, gamloy. Also, this we should have read the line too. Gamloy titzdorich malocha loimu etus. This person also will is going to require a work that is not small, right? In other words, so clearly he, we see that according to Ramchal, he feels that it's easier to cleanse yourself from arias than it is from money related issues like because he said right even chasidim occasionally who are so many chasidim on so many other levels have had trouble cleansing themselves for themselves from from monetary related things mm -hmm. so this one is easier so is it easier because of what they're saying because there's less gray areas possibly okay moving on um, sorry uh, now please understand that not in part of the Isra is not the, the act itself. Ela kol ha koroiv a love, but anything that's close to it. O mikramolei hu leisikrivu the galois erva, do do not uh, approach, right? Leisikrivu the galois erva, do not approach to to reveal erva, right? Reveal erva is is what we call the act itself, and leisikrivu it means do not come close. Um, so this is a bit of a machloikas. Just again, this is me. I don't know if it's. I don't know if he's going with one opinion. I'm not sure. Um, well, actually, let's re just refinish this paragraph, right? So again, so he's saying. So, so so he's saying again. How do you read this, right? Not only is the act itself forbidden, mm -hmm. but even approaching the act is also forbidden. Right? What does that mean? How would you say that? That's rabbinic, or, or the raisa, or or minatara. Pretty clear, I think. Right? Brings, simple read. Uh, agree, yeah. Simple read is that he's bringing this verse to say that not you see from this verse that not only the act itself was forbidden from the Torah, but mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. right, the the approaching whatever approaching, however you define approaching, is also going to be also from the Torah, right? Mm -hmm. So okay, we'll see in a second, but that's that's only one opinion. It's a machlokes rishonim, the Rambam and the Ramban, and he's taking seems to be taking a side on the on the Rambam's side. Okay, Bamar zechonim rebracha, and our sages said, Omar Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Al Toimer Hakadosh Just again, Omar Hakadosh Baruch Hu, right? Hashem is speaking. Al Toimer, don't say Hoyl ve'osr lelish tamish biisha, since I am forbidden to have relations with the woman. Harini toifsa. Maybe I'll grab off in the oven, but that's not a sin. Harani Megafafa, I'll grow her in the oven, and it's not a sin. Oh, yeah, and Shani Noishko in the oven, or I will kiss her, and that's not a sin. Omar HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Again, Hashem says, Kashem Shi im Nodar Nozir, Shiloy Lishta Isyain. That if a Nozir made a nether not to drink wine, Osir Lechola Novim Lachim Viveshim, he is forbidden to eat. Uh, grapes that are lachim, that are, uh, what's the word, uh, mm -hmm. meaning not dry, whatever, it's full, let's call them full, vivation or dried up, meaning like raisins, or mistress of them, or squeezed out juice of grapes, 
or anything that comes out from the vine, right? Af isha she'eina shelcho, so to a woman that is not yours, right? Also meaning, doesn't, I don't know if it means and therefore somebody else's, or just means any woman that's, mm-hmm. that you're not married to. Also ligabokol ikar, you're forbidden to touch her altogether, right? Somebody who touches a woman who, that is not his, maybe Misa Le'atzmoy. He brings death upon himself. Okay? Fine. It brings a pasuk from Mishlei. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but those are also not supposed to walk with a vineyard. But he does, he doesn't break anything. Just, right. He doesn't protect himself. So... What is it? What does it mean? He's not supposed not supposed to walk by the vineyard. So he doesn't end up. Where does it say that? But is it? Actually, there's examples in Navim. You're not supposed to go this way. All right, but does it say that in the, in the Torah? No, it's not. Right. So okay, we're gonna discuss. I think we'll discuss what you what you're hinting at. But let's just go back first to this. Um, so, so if you read this paragraph, Omar HaKadosh Baruch is bringing this medrash, right? Is it forbidden with the Arisa to, to touch a woman that is not, right? That's not, that's not your wife, right? Pretty clear that yes, right? Pretty clear that yes. Mm-hmm. Um, Omar HaKadosh Baruch and, and the comparison is that just like HaKadosh Baruch Hu forbade grape products right yeah right so let's see the Rambam first I just again just to get the idea so the Rambam says a mitzvah sh- hashin nun gimel mitzvah 353 Right, he is his hirono that we are commanded, mikarev, we are warned, cautioned from coming close, leachas mikol eloha arayas, to any one of these arayas, vaafilu buloibia, even though there is no intercourse. Kagoin chibuk, veneshika, like hugging or kissing, vaadoi melami pule saznus, or any other actions, what he calls the actions of znus, right? Affect, affection, actions of physical affection. Vuhu amro yisale ba'azhara mezeh, Ish ish el kol she'er b'saroy loy sikri v'legalay serva. So it says you cannot approach to reveal erva, right? Even though ki ilu yoymer loy sikri v'mehen kiru, you don't come close to them. Some kind of a closeness yovi, which is which can bring legalay serva to reveal the erva. So not only the 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 act itself, but anything that is usually leads to that sort of act. So any kind of affection which leads to it, right? So learn somehow, okay. Um, so then the Gemara says but the, that maybe I would have thought that, that you're also high of Kores on just affection, just like your chai of kores on the, on the act itself. So, um, the Gemara says, no, so says that those that do the act will be cut off, but not those that will just come close to the act. Right? So it's a love, but it doesn't have the same level of kores. So, <clears throat> um, so the Ramban says, "Avel kefiha in the Talmud." Somebody who studies carefully the Gemara, "Ain't a dover came." That is not the case. She a bekriva she ain't bogilu erva. That an, an affection that doesn't have the actual act going chibuk v'nishuk lav umal because that there is a negative uh, commandment. 
and he brings again, he brings proofs. Okay, so again, it's a very long, there's a lot of discussion here on this, on this topic. Um, but that's okay, but we're saying, so the question, right, so that's the question, it's a machlek, it's whether this is a deraise or a derabon. So the Rambam holds that, that any kind of affection is, an, is a, a very deraise, therefore it's punishable by Malkus. Mashiach in the Rabban says, no, it's only a rabbinical thing. And a rabbinical thing. Okay? Fine. That's a side point. I mean, that's a side point, but that's just, again, just another big issue that we're not going to go into. But now let's go into, like, ask a global question. Right? A global question. Is there such a thing as... as right? So we don't understand there's a concept called siyag. Right? There's a concept called creating a fence. Right? Mm -hmm. The rabbis are... make usually... Right? Most of it, you know, a lot of times that we look at, it, it seems like the you know ninety nine percent of the things that we do or mm -hmm. don't do seem to be rabbinical and not biblical, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So the question is, first of all, where did the rabbis have the right to make such such siyogim? Right. Number one. Number two is, is there such a thing as a siyog that is min Torah? Meaning, does the Torah set up fences for itself or is that doesn't even make sense or the the whole concept of how could the Torah set up fences for the Torah that mm. right yes okay so that's I yeah. hear the question what no, the questions is understood so let's see now that we got that question let's see what uh, how he frames the next paragraph okay the bait yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, now look, a bait, mm -hmm. beautiful word. Bait. Maniflu divrei How wonderful are the words of this statement? Okay, so it's interesting. That's that's a nice. You know, a, again, this is not. I mean, we have this. Ramchal uses this phrase a few times already, but but the fact that Ramchal is very impressed by this statement of Chazal tells us something about. It. He really, you know, he really appreciates this this quote over any other quotes. Right? How wonderful are the words of this statement. Because it, it compared, it right, made an analogy of this prohibition to a nausea. Asher That even though the primary iser is really only drinking of wine, right? The, so when the Torah says, Nazir, don't drink wine, that's what the Torah wants. The Torah says, Nazir, don't drink wine. So how did, why did the Torah forbid other things? Hine Osra, Hine Osra, Loi Torah, but the Torah forbidden, Kol ma sheyesh loi shayachas imayayin, that anything that has a connection to wine, right? Even grapes and grape products and raisins, right? Anything that is, that is wine-related is also forbidden. Why did the Torah do that? So to teach you, this is this message. This is like a, a, a hidden, or not a hidden, a direct message to Chachomim. How they should make a siyag for Torah. It's a message that they should make a siyag for Torah. B'mishmeres with the guard, guard, guardrail, guarding, whatever, shenimser biyodam, that was given over to them, lasais lemishmarto, that they should do for, to protect it. Now this lotion of bimishmeres mishmarto, we'll get back to that in a second. Kiyil medu nazir, they should learn from nazir, lasar ba'avur ikar that they should forbid something in order to protect the ikar. Gam kol the domile. They should protect something similar to it. Benimtza she also saw a Torah be mitzvah zois shel nasir. So what what comes out is that the Torah, right in this mitzvah of nasir, Mashem Moshe lechachomim gave over to chachomim she yasu b'shar kol a mitzvah. So the nasir mitzvah is a prototype for all other mitzvahs. Leman das that we should know she zeret soyne shel mokum that this is the desire of Hashem. Right, so Nazir teaches us to apply the idea to all other mitzvahs. So even though Nazir is Minatara, 
right? Right, Nazir is Midaraisa, but we understand Nazir that the, the some Daraisa elements of Nazir are only what's the word? Preventative, mm-hmm. prophylactic, right? Mm-hmm. Some Daraisa elements of Nazir are clearly prophylactic. So why did the Torah answer it to say, "Ah, guys, use this as your prototype and apply it universally"? And you decide, you figure out. Right, the Chachamim have to figure out, you know, should the fence be over there or should mm-hmm. the fence be over here? Right, you figure it out. You need to know human nature. You need to know human psychology. You need to know, uh, you know, the issues and figure out where exactly to put the fence. Right. So, okay. So again, we'll discuss this in a second. Let's, let's digest this because mm-hmm. it's really a remarkable statement. Uh, and when a Torah answered some one of the Yisurin, we learn, we, we should learn the, 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 the closed from what is explicit, right? To, to, to answer what is close to it. Okay, so two, two things and a couple of things jump on. So, so again, he's saying, he's saying that all of the Chachomim Siyogim, the Chachomim in place, right, in, in, in act, they, they really are built in. They're kind of, it's not just, the Chachomim noticed the problem, and to protect the issue, they said, okay, listen guys, no more touching Mutzan Shab. Right? It's more than that. It's saying that, there is a there is a desire. It's built in, really. Hakadosh Baruch Hu could have said, "I'm going to make those gzeiros to protect the ikker," right? But no. It's gonna, it, you know, that's what I have basin for, so I don't need to do it. The basin will know how to set up these harchakas, right? Um, again, I, from why this is just my personal thought. This bothers me a little bit. Why? Because I always I always felt that that. That no, that Zeres Chachomim are a certain, are a certain diminishing of of avoid Hashem. Meaning, just like, in a certain sense, we see by Odom Arishan when he made his siyog, mm-hmm. right? It kind of opened, you know, the possibility of, you know, when you make a fence. When you create a new fence that is not a real fence, to me, it's also possible that when you break that fence, you already train, you know, you, you, breaking you, you a fence break becomes fence. more yeah. complicated. That's, I mean, that's just one example. But in general, any, any, any intervention, the way I see it, any external intervention, any external intervention really changes the dynamics of the whole thing. In anything, in, any, in anything. As soon as you have any kind of internal in- intervention, it totally shifts, you know, the the the, the power balance. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the way I see it. So Chachamim had no choice. Listen, people have a problem. People can't stay mm-hmm. on the straight and narrow. And in order to protect the Iker, Chachamim had no choice, so they protected mm-hmm. the the you know the the outside, even though it wasn't necessary. But what can you do? There was no other choice. That's how I always viewed it. Ramchal is saying, no, that's not at all the situation. That's not at all the situation. The situation is, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants, he understands the world that he created. Everything is in balance. Everything is in perfect balance. The human desire and the ikkar, there's a perfect mm-hmm. balance. And he understood that there has to be a fence mm-hmm. set up. This kind of a fence. Mm-hmm. This semi, semi-permeable, whatever it is, fa- fence. He understood all of that, and that's part of the, the picture of of the of Avodas Hashem that he wanted to create. So it's not some kind of like a, a bidiyavid, that the way mm-hmm. I saw it. It's, no, it's it's the lechatchila. That's what he that's the what he showed us by by Nazir, and 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 Chachamim are just taking that roadmap from Nazir and applying it as they, as their authority sees fit. Mm-hmm. Okay, so again, it's a different worldview from from my worldview. Okay, so that's number one, point number one. Point number two, point number two, 
Um, point number two. So point number two, going back to the issue of the Rambam and the Ramban, right? So even though the first, the first statement, he seemed to be like going like the Rambam, right? He brought the pasuk says right? Seems like going like the Rambam. Now we see from the second paragraph, no, that's not the case because he's clearly talking about, right? He's making a comparison that by Nazir it's the Raisa, but everywhere else it's the Rabbanon. Everywhere else is the Rabbanon. So he's referring to this this thing of this le secret of the Gala Serva, right? Because he could have said just like. You know, he could have done the same, the same extrapolation the Chachomim made from Nazir to other places. They could have made them from Erva to other places. So if, 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 if coming close to an mm-hmm. Erva is only a precaution to the thing itself. So it's the same precaution by Nazir. It's, it's, a, it's the same thing. So mm-hmm. clearly he's saying, no, the Sikribu is, is a Durabon. But again, maybe with him, again, I mean, I'm just not thinking about it out loud, but maybe with him, the precaution is closer what's the word it's closer to the to the pasuk mm-hmm. it's not again it's not an external intervention it's the sauce what he calls sauce and her it's it's the it's the closed from what is explicit meaning you the chachamim are extending the power of the Torah not ex, it's not an external intervention it's more like an internal expansion Okay, that's that's point number two. And point number three is over here, there's a question. Whoa, what are you talking about Nazir? That's not, we don't learn from Nazir that we have to make fences for Arias. That's not true. Where did you, where did you come up with it? We learn, it's a, it's a different pasuk. It says, it says, Ushmartemes uh, Mishmarti, uh, and you should guard my guards. Ushmartemes Mishmarti, you should guard, right? And what does it mean? Mishmartemes mishmarti. Was that double lashon? Drasha is benishmar taase mishmeres le mishmarti. Make a guard for my guard, right? Mm-hmm. So, so there's a very explicit, there's a very explicit what's the word commandment for chachomim mm-hmm. to make a guard benishmartem es mishmarti, right? And so. So why is he going to Nazir to say, hey, look, just like by Nazir you aser grapes, so too by Arias you also should aser other things, right? It's not true by Arias. It says, it says specifically, that you got to make a guardrail. So it's, it's okay. So, mm-hmm. right? And that's, so he's, so they're answering again. They're answering a question that I'm not sure I understand. They're answering... So they're saying, so they're saying that there's two steps over here. That when Ushmartemes Mishmarti gives Chachomim the authority to enact siyogim, to enact guardrails. But from Nazir, you see that it's actually something that the Torah, meaning it's like I said, it's an expansion of the Torah. It's not, it's not just. From Mishmartemis, Mishmarti would have thought the Chum, it's an external, like I said, it's an external, um, it's an external intervention. It's an external intervention. From Nazir, you see, no, it's not an external intervention, it's an expansion. Okay? So it's a two step process. First, you need an authority, the Chum can do it. That's what Shmartemis, Mishmarti. And the second thing is that not only can they do it, it's really, it's really desired, desired to do it. Okay? So that's what they're saying. Again, I, if you look at the if you look at the source, which Martemis from Shmarti, at least in the source that they bring over here, it's talking about Shniyas uh, Le'arayis. It's talking about expanding. So there's there's Arayis, right? Certain re- relations are forbidden, mm-hmm. and then there are certain relations which are not forbidden that the Chachamim said are also forbidden. So, yeah. So I'm not sure if it's really the, you know there's the width, so to speak, and there's the depth mm-hmm. of Iser. So, Mishmartemes Mishmarti maybe is, is referring to 
not so much preventing my desire from jumping the fence as much as preventing a certain societal look. How come this one is married to his relative? That's okay. So how come I can't marry that relative? The, just the, the, the map. They have to create a map. is create a map that is more acceptable. While the situation by, by, by Nazir is more like, if I do this, I will, you know, I'll, I'll go from one step. I'm not, okay, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it seems to me it's a different, it's a different track. One is a track of confusion. I may think that this is okay just because this is okay. The other one is this desire will lead me to the next desire to lead me to the next desire. You know, it's, in, it's on the same track. It's not that I'll jump from one rail to the other rail. It's more like I'll just go farther on the same rail. Okay. Um, and finally, on this issue, Finally, I think what, what, what is beautiful for me here is that, right, is that specifically the comparison to Nazir is actually quite, quite interesting, right? Why comparison to Nazir? Because, because I think to some degree, right, to some degree, Nazir is addressing an issue of addiction. Wine, right, is a question of addiction, even though person doesn't have to be an addict mm -hmm. to become a nazir not at all but but it's it's addressing the issue where society has a weakness and society has a weakness of addiction right so the problem is so how do you battle addiction so one way to battle addiction is i'm, I'm going to se separate from you right mm -hmm. if i can separate you from 30 days I can see that it's doable. Uh, intellectually, I understand. Nobody wants to be an addict. If you ask, if you ask an addict, do you want to be an addict? Do you want to be in, completely enslaved to your desire? They'll say, no, I want to be a free man. I want to be a free person. But you're enslaved. No, 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 no. Uh, I, can, I, can, I can stop any time, right? I can stop any time. I'm in control, right? Okay, so, okay, let's see. Become a nausea, stop for 30 days. See, see what's going to wor work out. Right, so he stops for thirty days. If he can't stop for thirty days, maybe then he can he can then gain control again. But addiction is something that a person is constantly battling with. That's a constant yitzhar. So addiction and yitzhar are very closely related ideas, right? So the point is that just like a person can understand the issue of addiction when it comes to wine, then a person can also from there extrapolate to other ad kind of addiction like experiences, which is lust, right, or desires. They're also very much addiction-like experiences. We have a strong desire and we have a hard time coping. We're trying a hard time saying no, no to our, to our desires, right? So that's why the, the, the parallel from Nazir to, to Arias is a very, is just a very apropos uh, um, parallel. Okay. Um, Okay, let's just, I mean, we, okay, clearly I thought we were going to cover much more than we did, but let's just maybe read it to two more lines. Okay, so with this, in, on, in this way, in this vein of, of, um, of expanding, right, the Isser to, to, to other desirables, let's put it that way, so they, they answered everything that is within the category of znus, or what's close to it, from whatever sense it could be, whether it's action, right? So it could be, they answered certain actions, or whether it's only seeing, speech, listening, and even in thought, right? So now he's going to go th so through. So what did he tell us? Again, just understand what he tells us. He told us, and this is where Arias is different from Gezel. Gezel, the problem is, I think, was that it's very easy for a person to get mixed up and therefore rationalize actual mm -hmm. derises, mm -hmm. right? It's more difficult and this is as similar to what they said in the Bible, it's more difficult for a person to rationalize the arises of arise, right? 
you can't see it yourself. Uh, probably this Aishas Ish is mutter to me. It's, that's much more of a difficult rationalization, right? Mm -hmm. So when it comes to Arias, he's addressing which issues? He's addressing the issues of the Rabbonans, right? He's not addressing really the issues of the Arias, he's addressing the issues of the Rabbonans, right? The Siyogim that the Torah addressed. But, but him, his understanding of these Rabbonans, as we saw, is not just they're the Rabbonans. No, these the Rabbonans are really built into the actual intent of the mitzvah of Arias. So that's why they're included in, in, in it. Okay? Now, the, what's interesting over here is the progression, right? So I'm going to talk, so he's telling us he's going to talk about certain the Rabbonans, but which ones? Related to action, mm -hmm. vision, speech, hearing, and even thought. Right? Would you put them in the, sa in the same order? I would have said action, speech, and then he seeing, and then hearing, and then thought. That's what I would have done. Right? Action clearly comes first. It's much more tangible. It's much more real. Seeing is a strong desire of seeing. Uh, speaking... Speaking to me is more of an action. No? Okay. So, again, it seems to me that they're, they're working in pairs, really. Maisa and Ria is one pair. So, there is the act action, and then there is seeing, which, which there's no action, but I'm seeing it, mm -hmm. and so it's it's more real, right? Then there is speech, and 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 speech and listening is again is a, is a, is a pair of t of talking about it and then mm -hmm. just listening about it, and then machshava is its own category. Machshava, maybe what's wrong? What's wrong with f fantasy, right? What's wrong with fantasy? Mm -hmm. You would have thought there's nothing wrong. Kamash Malon is going to tell us that, that mm -hmm. there is something wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, but all right, so that's. That's that. I guess from now we're gonna so we're gonna continue next time where he's gonna talk in these details. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm.